People stop and stare, they don't bother me, for there's no other place on earth that I would rather be. Now, you weren't expecting that, were you? Yeah, you were expecting the sounder, of course, because that means uh, P-P-A. Please pay attention. And then um, I sang badly. Well, maybe it wasn't too bad because I'm working on it. But uh, just before I came into the studio, I was driving down here and I had the... Uh, FM Sirius on, and I was listening to the Sinatra channel, and uh, there was a Bobby Darren selection. He and, uh, you know, Bobby Darren, Frank Sinatra, knew each other. In fact, it was Bobby Darren who actually wrote <laughs> I Did It My Way, which Frank had as his theme song, though supposedly Frank didn't really like that song that very much, but of course, uh, that's the song that sold, and that's the one he sang. But what I do... And this is an interesting idea. I'm not a singer. I'm a noisemaker. Uh, as I say uh, sometimes in church when it comes to singing, uh, the verse says, I make a joyful noise. Well, I can make a noise, but I'm not so sure I can make a good song. But as part of my breathing exercises and just kind of keeping myself awake and keeping myself present. Uh, I oftentimes turn on something like the uh, 60s or 70s channel or the Sinatra channel or maybe even go back to the 50s channel, which I know quite well, and uh, I like to sing along and uh, give it full expression. And that's good for me. It makes me feel good, it's good for my breathing, and of course it keeps my uh, radio voice uh, somewhat in tune. So maybe that's an interesting idea for you. Learn to uh, sing along on the radio, and of course I'm not bothering anybody. You know, uh, My wife has perfect pitch and she's a beautiful singer, both She's beautiful, and she's a beautiful singer. And so uh, when I sing, she kind of gives me the look, well, you're not really on tune still. Well, I don't know that. So uh, I sing by myself. Singing by yourself is good for you. Just do it quite often, and uh, nothing better, you know, in, in the car while you're driving along. Rather than texting or phoning, just kind of sing along. Well, I hope that was helpful for a Thursday. Thursday is the day where I remind myself that I have had an experience where, for some reason, some of the disturbances or the turbulence hits on Thursday. You know, you're, you think you've got the week just about on, in hand, you know, you're past the uh, hump day, thump day, but now it's Thursday, and uh, in effect, you are, uh, hey, you are <laughs> hit with something, and you got to get it fixed. And you want to get it fixed now. You want to get it fixed for sure by the weekend. You would like to have a little more rest and relaxation and uh, uh, plan for the future on Friday, Friday's future day. So uh, usually on Thursday, it's a, a turbulence day. Thursday is turbulence day. I don't know if that's your pattern, but it's one, it's one that has struck me from time to time. Well, I'm doing a lot of work as we are putting together podcasts that will work for you. Now, I do interesting ideas, and I told you uh, yesterday a little bit why we do interesting ideas. I'm also going to be doing a program called More Power to You. And I mean that. I don't need money. I need money, but I can't live for money. Uh, what are the things I want? Well... I don't want power over people. The world's full of enough people who do that. But I do want personal power in my, myself and just have a sense that, you know, I, 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 feel, I feel the power that I need to get through life and perhaps do it with a smile. It's called More Power to You, and it will be on uh, that unnatural act called prayer. And I guarantee you, whatever thought came to your mind when I said that word, you know, that P word, uh, different emotions hit, but let me just tell you this, for the most part, the response or the idea you had when I said the word prayer was probably not correct, not right, and it actually cut you off 
from a great deal of self-knowledge and perhaps uh, some interesting ideas and perhaps uh, a touch of reality. So we're going to do more power to you about prayer, how to be it and how to do it. Then we're also going to go into a program which we call the Encore Experience, and that's near and dear to my heart because I am now in my Encore stage. I am not a senior citizen. I am not elderly. Uh, I'm not an oldster. Even though I'm old, I'm living in my Encore. You know, like when Frank Sinatra would sing or Bobby Darren would sing, uh, the audiences oftentimes would say after uh, they finished their gig, encore, encore, particularly in, in symphonies. You know, I, I saw this time where Pavarotti, you know, had just really nailed it on his final one, and the audience just rises up in cheers and the, the shouts throughout the symphony hall, encore, encore, encore. Well, what we're about is trying to help you find out, particularly if you're of my age and stage, and that's a rather large audience, you know. What is it, Ten to 12,000 people a day turn 65 and ready for, quote, the retirement? We're going to try and help people uh, figure out as one of my friends says, uh, how to get an A-plus in retirement, and it's going to be how to live with the Encore experience. Looking forward to that, and uh, I'm putting a number of people together for that program. You might want to be a part of that, so uh, think about that. Well, here's for today. Again, we've talked about disruption or turbulent Thursday. I was reading from uh, a guy. I'd, I'd like to get to know him better because he has some of the same passions and past that I do. His name is Tom Webster, and um, he simply writes this. I hear things. Great name for an article. I hear things. Um, like, I've been thinking. I hear things. And he wrote an article uh, for April 29th called, uh, Hey, Roll with the changes. And what he did is obviously framed himself within what most people are about. And that is, hey, life is changing. Uh, it is not a negotiable anymore. So how do we roll with the changes? And he was talking about his own experience getting through the pandemic. And we all have pandemic stories and what they had done for him, and uh, what it finally came out in his article, he has decided uh, to uh, make some significant changes in my life. And uh, can I just, uh, again, I, I mention it always three times. His name is Tom Webster, and uh, obviously check him out. And his uh, production is called, you know, uh, <laughs> I Hear Things. Let me just... Uh, jump in, and he's talking about uh, his uh, life, and then we're going to focus on one sentence, okay? Being an introvert doesn't mean I don't like people or can't talk to them. I have, in fact, accomplished both in my lifetime with some regularity. It just means that I recharge my batteries alone, not in crowds. So after a day of presenting, I'm more likely to watch a movie in my room or have dinner with a handful of friends than I am to go to the conference party that night. But that doesn't change my love of speaking or my need to interact with other humans, no matter how exhausting they may be. <laughs> Present company excluded, of course. Now, pause. Of course, as I confessed, um, all of this is 50 years of practice performance. I am a hopeless introvert, but that's true. Here he goes. But I do miss you, dear readers. I miss talking to you and seeing your face, you know, because pandemic shutdown, and not your Zoom face. Oh, yeah, we don't like that. I went through a stretch last year where I really questioned my value. Yeah, if I'm not out there working with clients and presenting, 
What am I even doing, bro? But of course, I was doing a lot. Still, as for many of you, I'm sure this sparked a lengthy period of introspection. What am I even doing? <laughs> and I think that's, you know, again, pause. That's why a lot of people are going through the great resignation. This time has caused them to say, why am I doing this? Or what am I doing? <laughs> Is it something I want to do? Does it have any value? And of, of course, uh, that's true. Now, here's the sentence from Tom that I loved. What am I even doing then? Highlight, highlight, highlight. Am I doing enough of the things that make me feel strong? Or am I doing a lot of things that are merely enervating? You know what? <laughs> we're at 12 minutes on this Thursday, but we're going to wind it up. <laughs> but while we take 30 seconds, you think about that, and that'll be the closing comment. I'm Stan Houston. The program is Interesting Ideas because I get the chance every day to talk to interesting people and for you and for that, I am grateful. Well, here is the interesting thing that will carry you through tomorrow and the weekend. Again, Tom Webster. Again, remember, I always mention their name three times. No plagiarists here. All right. Am I doing enough of the things that make me feel strong? Yeah. What a good feeling. You know, particularly as we get older and we know that... That, that we are weaker, and we, we all are. We, we actually start going downhill physically, you know, sometime in our late 20s. But, you know, what makes me feel strong? You know, spiritually, emotionally, professionally. In fact, one of the great exercises that could come to you from Tom's comment is, uh, what are the things that actually make me feel strong? Let's do an audit. Let's do an emotional uh, and strength audit. You know, do a strength test. What are the things that make me feel strong? And then, of course, ask the question and think about it and maybe answer it. I know uh, Tom challenged me. And it was very helpful, and I passed that to wonderful challenge off to you. Here we go. Think about this. As we go into Friday and through the weekend, am I doing enough of the things that make me feel strong? Interesting idea. And, of course, you know my favorite expression. Just let that sit on your head for a while, maybe uh, stir your mind, <laughs> you know, do that, uh, move your spirit, and maybe even touch your heart. Sit on your head for a while and see where it goes. Again, always close with a benediction, so best and blessings to you. Uh, <laughs> God willing, and of course, the crick don't rise, we'll see you tomorrow on Friday. Bye for now.